as we saw in the first section when we have a lot of data for example in this figure birth weight or in this one gender it is not easy for us to answer questions that we may have for example the percentage of low birth weight babies or proportion of male babies this is because the data have not been arranged or structured in any way if there are any interesting features in the data they remain hidden from us we said then that the data couldn't tell their story and of course the more the data are the harder this becomes in this course we are going to describe some methods for organizing and presenting the data so that we can answer more easily the questions of interest essentially to enable us to see what's going on collectively these methods are called descriptive statistics these methods are a set of procedures that we can apply to raw data so that its principal characteristics and the main features are revealed this might include sorting the data by size, putting it into tables, presenting it as a chart, or summarizing it numerically. An important consideration in this process is the type of data that you are working with. Some types of data are best described with a table, some with a chart, some perhaps with both. Whereas with other types of data, a numeric summary might be more appropriate. In this section, we will focus on organizing raw data into what is known as frequency table. In subsequent sections, we will look at the use of charts and numeric summaries. It is, will be easier if we take each data type in turn, starting with nominal data. Let's first talk about frequency tables in nominal data. We have already seen this table in previous section presenting the raw data of the gender of the babies. Male is presented by M and female is presented by F. When we want to count the number of males and females in this raw data, we we'll found that there are 265 males and 235 females. We can express this information in more conventional form of a frequency table as in this one. The label at the top of the first left-hand column indicates the variable being described in the table. The remainder of the first column is a list of categories for this variable. The second right-hand side column is frequency colon. Frequency is another word for count and um, in this example lists the number of babies in each categories that is males and females. Let's now talk about something is called frequency distribution. Consider another example. This figure contains data from net lotion study that compared two types of treatment for nets malathion and d with a sample of uh, 95 children. For each child, data were collected in a nine variables, one being the child's hair color, blondie, brown, red, and dark. The frequency table extracted from this figure for the four colors categories is shown here. As you know, the ordering of normal categories is arbitrary, and in this example they are shown by the number of children in each. Uh, the largest is first. Notice that the total frequency n equal 95 is shown at the top of the frequency column. You should always do this, it is helpful to any reader. Taken as a whole, this table tells us how the hair color of each of the 95 children is distributed across the four color categories. In other words, this table describes the frequency distribution of the hair color data. We can see that the most common hair color is brown and the least common is red. We will have more to say about frequency distribution later. Okay. Now let's talk about relative frequency. Often if more used than the actual number of individuals in each category are uh, percentages. Table with this information are called relative or uh, percentage frequency table. Relative frequency table or percentage frequency table. The third column on this table shows the percentage of children in each hair color category. This table tells us that over half of the children 51.6% had brown hair. 
This seems to be more helpful than knowing that 49 out of 95 children had uh, brown hair. When the data in a question are ordinal, as an example, 475 psychiatric patients were questions about their level of satisfaction with their psychiatric nursing care. Level of satisfaction is clearly an ordinal variable. Satisfaction cannot be properly measured and has no unit, but the categories can be meaningfully ordered as they have been ordered here. The resulting data is shown in this table. The frequency values indicate that more than half the, of the patients were happy with their psychiatric nursing care. 282 patients, 121 plus 161, out of 475. Much smaller numbers express dissatisfaction.